Long time no here, ladies and gentlemen. You are tuned in to Get Well Soon, the red pill content of Welly F. And I was just venturing off into the world of history. And I was actually intrigued by a certain phenomenon that I think is going to be the silent reaction to what is going on in America. And as I read more and more into it, it has different names. And the main term is white flight. (laughs) The term white flight has always made me laugh because when I realized what white flight or white exodus is, It was like, wow, it makes sense because I've always asked myself this question in general when when it comes to why is it that when people aren't happy somewhere, how come they just don't leave? And in the current times that we're facing, I think it's interesting that the phrase, or the question for that matter, why don't you just leave is considered a racist statement. But if you look at it from a logical point of view, it makes sense. So white flight is one of the terms. And one of the other terms is urban decay. And let me see here. They... They define urban decay, and and I honestly think that this makes a lot of sense. I mean, urban decay is the sociological process by which a previously functioning city or a part of a city falls into despair and decrepitude. It may feature deindustrialization, depopulation, deurbanization, and economic restructuring, abandoned buildings and infrastructure, high local unemployment, increased poverty, fragmented families, low overall living standards and quality of life. The list goes on and on. And it seems like this has been taking place since about the 70s and 80s. And it's mostly associated with Western cities in North America, parts of Europe, mostly the UK and France. And the thing that a lot of these places have in common is white flight. And I've been noticing that with all these protests that they want to label them, it would only make sense for the reaction to something like that to be, you know what, I'm going to pick up and get the hell out of here. And to be honest with you, white flight, in a sense, it's looked at as a Caucasian action. It's looked at as something that racists do. But as I venture off into a world of common sense, so to speak, I still think that it's something that should be done by a group of people that want better. Because to be honest with you, it's interesting to, how do I say, you want to live in a place where you're not the minority. Because people who live in a place where their majority tend to feel safer. So when you look at places like the west side of Chicago, uh, old Harlem, When you look at places like Detroit, I mean, you can argue that it was a time where these places were probably white dominated. And then once the white population dipped, (laughs) you saw overall decrease in the value of life and the quality of life in these places. And this is where, to me, it gets interesting because my main question is, 
if white flight is such a bad thing, then how come in places like Brampton, Canada, and I and, 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 and I've been following Canadian news a lot. I've been following this news channel called Six Buzz TV, and it's pretty much like the Canadian version of the Shade Room, and I find it very interesting because on there, they always particularly talk about this, I think it's a Toronto suburb, which is Brampton. It's a city in Ontario. It's in southern Ontario, and it's a suburban city in the greater Toronto area. And it's a part of the Peel region, if you know what that is. But when you when you look on Six Buzz TV and they talk about Brampton, Man, they have never say anything good about Brampton on this channel. And I've always found it amazing. So I'm going to post this article from The Guardian that covered the white flight that occurred in Brampton. And once again, um, <laughs> they, they nicknamed Brampton, Bramladesh, and Brown Town. And... Uh, Due to its 73% visible minority being the ethnic group Indian. (laughs) Oh, man. Like, it's wild when you really just think about how when minorities come in, they shift the overall makeup of a place. And coincidentally, these places become ghetto. These places become dangerous, so to speak, like a Chicago where they call it Chirac. You know, you got places like East St. Louis and Little Rock that are just terrible places to live in aspects of being safe. And I'm not saying all this to say that white people don't deal with crime as well, because I definitely believe that when you look at law enforcement, they probably tend to give white people more of a pass in regards to criminal activity. And then they see minority and they treat them more harshly. So the crime reports tend to be exacerbated. But I think that just goes to show that when a minority group comes in to take over a city, it's their responsibility to take full control of the city Sort of like what happened in South Africa after the, after the apartheid. When you take full control of the city's government, the city's law enforcement, you would expect things to get a lot better in regards of how your people are treated. But the fact of the matter is, something that I always talk about on the podcast, No Boundaries, that I do is, it has more to do with the culture rather than the actual people. And the fact of the matter is, yes, white people are weird and they may do things that we'll never truly understand, but I don't think that they embrace criminal activity the way a lot of other minority groups do, specifically Mexican-Americans, Black Americans. Like, and, And to be honest with you, I hate to conflate all white skin people into one category because I can easily say Southern whites, rednecks are probably, j- they embrace criminal activity just as much. But outside of the, the the whites that get lumped into that, so to speak, like Jewish, Russian, Italians, so on and so forth, you know what I mean? Those, those cultures just don't embrace lowbrow criminal activity the way other ethnic groups do. And it really seems like the Indians in Canada, the Indian groups in Canada are just a whole nother level. I mean, I'm not the, I'm not the, um, I'm not an expert on these ethnic groups, but the fact of the matter is, like I said, if you look on Six Buzz TV and you see the wild and out that goes on in this Brampton suburb, it's amazing. 
it's amazing. But like I said, I'll post that article in there that talks about how the white population went from basically 192,000 to like 165,000. And right at as of 2011, it was it was under 150,000. Like that's a that's a that's a 50,000 pop. That's 50,000 people that you just that just dropped out of any like they just disappeared. And I in conclusion, I say all this to say that I truthfully believe that white flight is a logical response to an area that is choosing an, an area that is allowing itself to decay in your eyes, meaning it's starting to look less like you. And it's starting to look less like you because the government is allowing it, because the government is pushing more towards a progressive ideology, which in all aspects, I mean, there's nothing wrong with the government wanting to diversify a city and go into a more progressive mindset. But at the end of the day, it's something weird about that, because if I'm able to see that the data shows that white flight tends to destroy cities. White flight tends to make cities less like they're not as they're not better off after white flight. So you have to ask yourself, what's the overall purpose of a city becoming more ethnic to the government? And my main guess is it's to exploit those ethnic groups into free labor such as prison it's to make these these cities more a lot easier to control because they know what areas to keep white meaning they know the government is going to remain white in most of these places like in Minnesota i believe like the somalian the somalian uh, group is becoming a lot more prominent and they're doing it very smart by making sure that, you know, the Somalis out there, like, they're trying to take over that mug. And, like, they, they've they doing government. I'm pretty sure they haven't taken it over as much as they would like. But I can see what direction the Somalians are going in uh, 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 Omar's, Omar's territory. But all in all, all I'm saying is a complete restructuring of a town from its, from its ethnic groups is really supposed to be the goal once this happens, but it just seems like these particular groups, Mexican Americans and black Americans especially, they seem to overrun a city, but they don't actually run it. And it this has to be a chess move in order to basically imprison blacks in a city. Because everywhere you look where there is predominantly black life, the quality of life doesn't look anything like the quality of life that blacks once held in the first quarter of the 1900s. When you think about predominantly black cities these days, you think about places like Detroit that has like a 75% unemployment, like 75% of the inhabitants there are unemployed. You think of places like Atlanta, where homosexuality run ra runs rampant, HIV is is just all over the place. You look at places like some of the little cities in New in, in Louisiana, low education level, you know, obesity running rampant. Like I said, the quality of life just seems to be so much worse off. When it's predominantly these ethnic, these racial, these Latinos, these blacks, when it's, whenever it's not white, middle class and up, it just seems like the quality of life is truly questionable. And can I blame that on systemic racism or can you talk about the quality of life? And I don't mean to drone on, but one of the one of the smartest things that I heard yesterday playing basketball at the park with a gentleman that was pretty, pretty sharp. He basically just said that he agrees with me when it comes to culture, but he still says that if you look at the systemic racism that has influenced that culture, you can't discount that fact. And I respect that wholeheartedly, and I actually agree, because at the end of the day, the culture that a lot of these groups embrace 
they they embrace these cultures because of the fact that, I mean, like, what else do they have when the system is set up to make them fail? What else is there for them to hold on to? But anyways, I hope you think about it. I know this isn't typical red pill male on female stuff, but it's red pill in the sense of when you open your eyes once again and you see what's going on around you, you ask questions, especially if you don't understand them. So, like I said, man, white flight is hilarious. And I don't even know what I'm going to title this, but obviously you'll see the title before this. But uh, anyways, until we meet again.